entertainment around the world seemingly disregards any sense of morality, and now, especially in America, embraces the diabolical almost completely. I want you to know that no one had less to do with this award than Jesus. <laughs> he didn't help me a bit. This award is my God now. Thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role. When you put this in someone's hands, you're acknowledging the choices that they make as an actor, moment by moment, scene by scene, day by day, but you're also acknowledging the choices they make as a person. And I wouldn't have been able to do this without employing a woman's right to choose. I'm a stuntman, a stunt coordinator, and a second unit director, which is an action director in Hollywood for the last 30 years. And currently I'm in Belfast, Ireland. I'm, I'm the second unit director on the new Dungeons and Dragons movie. And uh, throughout my career, I've been, as a stuntman, I've been Batman, Spider-Man, Daredevil, Robin. As a stunt coordinator, I got the best, the award for the best stunt coordinator for my work in uh, Live Free or Die Hard from the Red Bull Taurus Awards. My humble opinion, it being in Hollywood for almost three decades now, the the Hollywood lifestyle, the, the, the personal side of it, as well as the work side of it, is very soulless. The media and entertainment industry generated $2 trillion around the world last year, and it is expected to hit $2.5 trillion by the year 2024. Within this industry, the United States has the largest share in the world, as it makes up roughly a third of that $2 trillion revenue every year. The top media and entertainment conglomerates in America consist of AT&T, which owns HBO, Cartoon Network, CNN, and Warner Brothers, Facebook, Walt Disney, which owns ABC, Pixar, Marvel Studios, ESPN, and even National Geographic, Netflix, Comcast, which owns Universal Pictures, NBC, MSNBC, and USA Network, and there's also Viacom CBS, which owns Paramount Pictures, MTV, Nickelodeon, BET, Comedy Central, and Showtime. Hollywood, which is synonymous with the entertainment industry, is run by these companies. In fact, among the top grossing movies of 2021, Warner Brothers, Walt Disney, and Universal Pictures all own the top spots. Not everybody in Hollywood is evil, but I would say the majority of the people, especially like the majority of the actors, the majority of the, the producers and directors, they're definitely being guided by people up above with the agendas. Actors from the point of inception into Hollywood, they're being told what to do 24 seven. Not only are they being told what to do, what to say, where to go, what to act, act like, you know, who to, what character to play on screen, but, you know, take for instance, maybe like a Leonardo DiCaprio on the Academy Awards. He's, he starts talking about global warming. He's given a script by somebody and getting paid tons of money to read that script and to promote that agenda. So, the reason why I think that a lot of these actors are maybe soulless in some way is that they're just puppets. They don't have their own identity. They're promoting other people's identities 24 seven. In the early days of Hollywood, there were guidelines that had to be met in order for movies or motion pictures to go out to the public. This was known as Hollywood's production code. In 1930, this new code was written and it regulated the motion picture industry. Although it was adopted by Hollywood in 1930, it was not applied and enforced until 1934. Among the principles laid out, no picture shall be produced which will lower the moral standards of those who see it. The audience should never be thrown to the side of crime, wrongdoing, evil, or sin. Law, natural or human, should not be ridiculed, nor shall sympathy be created for its violation. Behind the creation of the code were two Catholics, Martin Quigley and Father Daniel Lord. The code also forbid homosexual acts and required other evils like adultery not to be justified. So there's the world, the flesh, and the devil. So obviously we all have a fallen nature, so we're struggling with our concupiscence. We're, we're attracted to evil things. We're attracted to our own pleasure and to taking things out of context and to disobeying God for ourselves, making ourselves our own gods, basically. And then the world, obviously, is, you know, as James tells us in his letter, friendship with the world is enmity with God. So the world is also constantly telling us we don't have to go far to put on the news or anything else to see what the world's trying to tell you to think. And then you have the devil who also hates God and opposes him. He doesn't care which lie you believe, just pick one. It doesn't matter. Just pick a lie so that it's not the truth, so that he can take you away from God. They all work in tandem, right? So you have the devil with his ideas, you have the world telling you one thing, you have your fallen nature. All the odds are against you. 
that's why even Jesus said to Peter, I prayed for you because otherwise the, de the devil would sift you like wheat. <laughs> like you don't stand a chance. So that's why we need grace and we need the sacraments and all these things to resist that and to fight that. Three years later in 1933, as entertainment in America strayed further and further from the natural and human law, the National or Catholic Legion of Decency was established. The Legion got the stamp of approval from Hollywood's recently established production code. Catholics who attended films condemned by the Legion were placing themselves under the pain of mortal sin. As enforcement of Hollywood's production code was still severely lacking, Bishop Maurice F. McAuliffe of Hartford, Connecticut, had his priests read this letter to parishioners on the first of every month for seven months straight. The films are an outrage to decency, morals, and religion. A relentless war must be waged against this orgy of filth and indecency. Let him stay away until the motion picture industry is rid of its current evils. That bishop that you quoted, he's talking about being vigilant and constantly fighting, fighting, fighting. And I find it very interesting because St. Peter in uh, 1 Peter, I think it's chapter 5, it's prayed in the in Compline in the Old Rite every night and you say, uh, Fratre sobri estote vigilate, which is brothers, be sober and be vigilant for your enemy like a roaring lion is going around looking for someone to devour, right? So you have to be vigilant. Of great interest, MGM begins its entire thing. You're in this dark room, the movie's about to start and their logo is a lion roaring at you. So I find that maybe a coincidence, but a striking one. So be vigilant. Don't let this. Don't let these ideas seep into your into your thinking. In 1934, code enforcement finally began, led by another Catholic in Joseph Breen, named head of the Production Code Administration, or the PCA. The Production Code Administration in Hollywood, where we are working for finer and better motion pictures. We must be on the lookout for scenes or action or dialogue which are likely to give offense. The responsible men in this industry want no such pictures and will not allow these to be shown. Any producer who attempted to play their movie in an American theater without the PCA's stamp of approval was fined $25,000. Liberty, the second largest magazine in America at one point, editorialized, Breen's appointment gave him, quote, more influence in standardizing world thinking than Mussolini, Hitler, or Stalin. 1948 marked United States versus Paramount Pictures, a landmark Supreme Court case ruled 7-1 that slowly crippled Hollywood's production code. Among the seven justices in favor was Justice William Douglas. Douglas wrote the majority opinion for the case, and he's also the same justice who nearly 20 years later would write the majority opinion in Griswold v. Connecticut which legalized contraception and played a key role in eventually legalizing abortion. The U.S. government made the claim the PCA held what amounted to a monopoly on the motion picture industry, a claim the high court accepted. The government's victory in this case changed the way films were produced and distributed, opening the floodgates for independent producers, studios, and theaters, all of which would be virtually uncensored and unregulated in comparison to films during the production code era which eventually ended around 1968. Today, Hollywood not only promotes homosexuality, abortion, transgenderism, and virtually every other intrinsic evil, but the industry now has no tolerance for anything promoting what the old production code called correct standards of life. The attack on Christianity and just morality in general, it, I think, you know, right now with, with, the, with the inception of, of Trump, they really had to fast forward their agenda, but I think all of this was just the reason, you know, I think this is just, uh, they wanted to drip feed us the change over time, over decades, and they've been doing it for over the, the last, you know, 30, 40 years.